Hi, everybody. This is Gat Saad for the Sad Truth. While evolutionary psychology is probably the discipline that most of you are familiar with when it comes to the application of an evolutionary lens to human behavior, there are several other approaches to the study of human behavior from an evolutionary lens, the totality of which are called the evolutionary behavioral sciences. So what I thought I would do today is just give you a very, very short and quick primer on some of these different uh, precursors to uh, what is now known as evolutionary psychology. And I discussed this uh, briefly in my uh, 2007 book, The Evolutionary Bases of Consumption. So some of you probably remember, if you've ever watched some of these classic National Geographic uh, documentaries, you'll see a gentleman uh, walking around with a bunch of little uh, ducklings behind him, following him. That gentleman is Conrad Lawrence, who is one of the founders of the field of ethology. Right? Ethology is an evolutionary-based approach to understanding uh, animal behavior. When you apply it to humans, the field becomes known as human ethology. So in this case, what you're studying are evolved instinctual patterns. Uh, so for example, th these are known as fixed action patterns. So in the case of the ducklings, uh, there is a evolved mechanism that basically instructs uh, the chick as it comes out, as it's as it hatches, uh, follow uh, the you know the first organism that moves around you. That's mommy. Well, uh, in most cases, that particular organism is going to be the actual mother of these ducklings, but you could replace that uh, mother duck. Uh, by Conrad Lawrence or by a Doberman or by a chimp, and then the mechanism will fire such that they will now follow that particular uh, uh, individual. And so this is known as a fixed action pattern. So in, in ethology, you study these uh, instinctual patterns uh, across species. So that's one type of approach uh, to studying behavior from an evolutionary perspective. Then there is the field of Darwinian anthropology, which itself is a fuzzy term because it, it could encompass several of the other disciplines that I'll be talking about. So in the case of Darwinian, Darwinian anthropology, uh, you study cultural expressions via an evolutionary lens. So for example, if you're doing an ethnographic study of different cultures, you might study the kinship structures across these different uh, cultures uh, and argue that those structures exist in that particular form because they result in a maximization of one's inclusive fitness. Uh, so Darwinian anthropology is seeking to incorporate uh, some evolutionary principles to the study of culture. I won't get into all the technical details of some of the theoretical uh, assumptions of each of these disciplines, but I'm just trying to give you a flavor of what these different uh, evolutionary disciplines do. Sociobiology is a field that uh, really became famous in 1975 when E.O. Wilson, the Harvard entomologist, uh, released his book uh, on sociobiology. And of course, it received more attention because in one of the chapters, he talks about how you could apply sociobiological principles to the study of human behavior. Uh, now, that was considered a no-no uh, by many uh, of his colleagues, uh, who, by incidentally, were themselves evolutionists. And so it was perfectly okay to apply sociobiological principles to study the behavior of uh, chimps or of the zebra. But if you apply them to humans, then suddenly you became a Nazi. Sociobiology is basically exploring the biological bases of social behavior. So things like kin selection, right? Why is it that uh, organisms evolve altruism toward their kin or reciprocal altruism? Why is it that uh, organisms would evolve the capacity to engage in uh, reciprocal arrangements? Those would be examples of phenomena that would have been studied by sociobiologists. So we've talked about very briefly ethology, Darwinian anthropology, sociobiology, behavioral ecology is uh, another discipline uh, that looks at how 
humans have the capacity to engage in adaptive responses depending on which niche they are filling, right? So the idea is that uh, humans are not so non-malleable that they have these very rigid mechanisms. Rather, their capacity to adapt to different environments is itself an adaptation. So the classic example that I like to use here is if you look, if you think of the uh, example that I discussed in one of my earlier Sad Truth clips where I talked about Darwinian gastronomy, which is a field that looks at, or a phenomenon that looks at uh, the differential use of spices across culinary traditions. Well, the idea is that uh, spices serve uh, a very important function. It's an antimicrobial uh, property. And so when you have very hot climates that are likely to have greater pathogenic food pathogenic loads, uh, then by using spices, you're attenuating some of those risks. And so in this case, what you're demonstrating is that cultural expressions will take on different forms as a function of specific local niches. So in the same way that your immune system has evolved the capacity to be adaptable, well, behavioral ecologists argue that humans have this behavioral plasticity that allows them to adapt to, to different local niches. So that's what behavioral ecologists do. Uh, mimeticists, which is now uh, perhaps unfortunately a field that didn't really take off much. So mimetics uh, comes from the term meme. Meme is a term that was popularized by uh, Richard Dawkins in his book, The Selfish Gene. Now, so a meme is the cultural analog of a gene. The idea being that in the same way that genes can propagate across populations, memes, which are anything that can go from one brain to another, it could be a jingle, it could be a song, it could be an idea, right? When you read my books, I am infecting your brain with my memes. A library is a very big collection of memes, right? Uh, religions are memeplexes. They're collections of memes uh, put together through some narrative and that can then spread from one brain to another. Some religions are more viral than others. And so Mimetics studies the diffusion of these memes using some uh, evolutionary principles and oftentimes some biological metaphors. And it hasn't really taken off as much as some folks would have uh, liked it to. And then finally, we've got evolutionary psychology, which really became a separate independent discipline in the late 80s, early 90s. And this is the idea that uh, if you wish to understand human behavior, you must understand the computational systems that have evolved in the human brain. And so evolutionary psychologists argue, as I've explained in a previous Sad Truth clip, they argue that the brain is made up of domain-specific computational systems, each of which would have evolved to solve a specific evolutionary problem. So think about the Swiss army knife, which is a, a wonderful metaphor. It's not my metaphor. Uh, I think it was Tubi and Cosmides, two of the pioneers of evolution psychology who first proposed it. So if you take the Swiss army knife, it has many different blades. Each blade solves a different function, right? So it's not a domain general knife that could be used to unscrew a, 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 uh, uh, what do you call it, a nail, or to cut cheese. Uh, rather, each of these different blades is used for a different purpose. Similarly, our brains, it is argued by evolutionary psychologists, are made of these distinct domain-specific computational systems to solve specific problems, find mate, retain mate, avoid predators, uh, uh, build uh, coalitions with non-kin, uh, invest in kin, avoid toxic foods. Uh, all of these different, all the, each of these evolutionary problems would have necessitated the evolution of specific computational systems. Uh, and so each of these fields tackle human phenomena uh, using a different epistemological perspective, and in many cases, different theoretical perspectives. Uh, some of these are perfectly consistent with one another. In other cases, uh, they are inconsistent with one another, in which case we then have healthy debates. Uh, but in any case, the totality of these fields are all different approaches by which you could study 
the evolution of human behavior. So, and incidentally, uh, my Concordia University research chair is in evolutionary behavioral sciences and Darwinian consumption, which specifically recognizes that there are a multiplicity of ways to study uh, human behavior from an evolutionary perspective. Of course, in my case, uh, I most notably applied in the context of consumer behavior. Uh, but of course, I define consumer behavior so broadly that, you know, most things can be consumed, can be considered consumatory in nature. So this gives you a bit of a sense, not only of what I do, but what the evolutionary behavioral sciences are. I hope you found this uh, uh, primer uh, informative. Please share it if you enjoyed it and uh, consider contributing to this channel via Patreon and or PayPal. Cheers.